It's about the way the internet has changed us, which makes you sound like a middle-aged man in like the early 90s, scared of the internet. But it's about how it's changed journalism and printed press and things like that. And in the same way, it's changed how we react to things, because now like a protest can be completely online. It can just be people talking online, whereas it used to be people in the street. So it's kind of about that. It might go wrong because I wrote it earlier. So it might not be very good. It's called um, A Death of the Journalist. People used to burn pages to show their in and outrages. These days the gauge for rage is who gets flamed on comments pages. No claim is too outrageous for 24 hour news updaters. Stories refined to save time, less complicators to sedate us. We ingest five lines or less news stories for our subconsciousness. As time goes by the internet will kill the printed press. Where's the scroll bar on these ink drinks pages? I ain't turning this. Don't believe the hype machine, death of the journalist. Good Friday, April 18th, 1930. BBC Radio News showed a rare maturity. The news reporter said something that these days they wouldn't say. Good evening. There is no news today. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't feel the need to fill with leads on non-news stories or picked apart on ripped painting fake failures of glories. And making molehills into mountains being exaggeratory, financial backers in their ear feeding different allegories. So let's beguile this horse whispered sickly media. Less reliable sources than Wikipedia. Journalism is dead, so rest in pieces of trivia. The blogger is king, the gossip column is leader. <laughs> As bloggers become the journalists, the art form dies. They don't have sources anymore, they just have Google finds. <laughs> Referencing other websites as if they were well sourced scriptures. They're more concerned with getting their hits up than winning Pulitzers. Their journalism is lazy in the need to be first. I do more research than some of them when I'm writing a verse. <laughs> and you know how we are, we don't need not much to believe it's true. We just don't look for truth to back it up, we accept it as news. But then, maybe the internet makes journalism redundant. Freedom of information despite the best attempts of some governments. WikiLeaks all over your screen and people tweeting their sufferance, but then facts are never facts as soon as man discovers them. And it ain't just news reporters, it's the musos too. If you've got a music blog, I'm probably talking to you. And don't just skim through intros, listen to the whole record through. And how about running a spell check before you upload a review? <laughs> <laughs> they drop a million band names to get their Google hits. Remember, you heard it here first, kids, and it was in bold italics. Throw enough shit at the wall and some of it will stick, but make no mistake, your wall's still covered in shit. <laughs> new remix in the promotion slog. We need exclusive new remixes for the dopest blogs. And half these online networks are flattery operated. Hand feed them but let them think it was internally propagated. With recycled lines these disciples fake their own identities. Your words ain't gifted when they're lifted from a, a fucking press release. <laughs> your opinion's worth next to nothing and that's all you'll amount to. You're so vain you probably don't know this song is about you. <laughs> ain't all bad. It's just the damn fakers, they get in line and follow suit behind the new tastemakers. Problem here is, I have a new record to sell. <laughs> and I've probably burnt some bridges on this web wide world. <laughs> Can I rebuild them? It's too far a distance to tell, and I ain't is embarking them Brunel. <laughs> and with less than half a bar to fix it, it ain't looking too swell. Oh fuck it, have a remix and some exclusive artwork as well. <laughs>